Marx's Critique of German Social Democracy, From the International to the Political Struggles of the, me, of the 1870s, by Marcelo Musto. One, the limited participation of the Germans in the International Working Men's Association. The workers' organizations that founded the International Working Men's Association in 1864 were something of a motley. The central driving forces were British trade unionism and the mutualists, long dominant in France but strong also in Belgium and French-speaking Switzerland. Alongside these two components, there were the communists grouped around the figure of Karl Marx, elements that had nothing to do with the socialist tradition, such as the followers of Giuseppe Massini, and some groups of French, Belgian, and Swiss workers who joined the international with a variety of confused theories, some of utopian inspiration. The General Association of German Workers, the party led by followers of Ferdinand Lassalle, never affiliated to the international, but orbited around it. This organization was hostile to trade unionism and conceived of political action in rigidly national terms. In 1865, the International expanded in Europe and established its first important nuclei in Belgium and French-speaking Switzerland. The Prussian combination laws, which prevented German political associations from having regular contacts with organizations in other countries, meant that the International was unable to open sections in what was then the German Confederation. The, Ger the General Association of German Workers, the first workers' party in history, founded in 1863 and led by LaSalle's disciple Johann Baptist von Schweitzer, followed a line of ambivalent dialogue with Otto von Bismarck and showed little or no interest in the international during the early years of its existence. It was an indifference shared by Wilhelm Liebknecht, Despite his political proximity to Marx, Johann Philipp Becker tried to find a way around these difficulties through the Geneva-based group of German-speaking sections. While Liebknecht did not understand the centrality of the international dimension for the struggle of the workers' movement, Marx also had deep theoretical and political differences with von Schweitzer. In February 1865, he wrote to the latter that, quote, the aid of the Royal Prussian Government for Cooperative Societies, end quote, which the Lasallians welcomed was, quote, worthless as an economic measure, whilst at the same time it served to extend the system of tutelage, corrupt part of the working class, and emasculate the movement, end quote. Marx went on to reject any possibility of an alliance between the workers and the monarchy. Quote, Just as the bourgeois party in Prussia discredited itself and brought about its present wretched situation by seriously believing that, with the, quote, new era, end quote, the government had fallen into its lap by the grace of the prince regent. So the Workers' Party will discredit itself even more if it imagines that the Bismarck era or any other Prussian era will make the golden apples just drop into its mouth by grace of the king. It is beyond all question that LaSalle's ill-started illusion that a Prussian government might intervene with socialist measures will be crowned with disappointment. The logic of circumstances will tell. But the honor of the Workers' Party requires that it reject such illusions even before their hollowness is punctured by experience. The working class is revolutionary or it is nothing, end quote, Karl Marx. Um, that's a letter to, uh, from Marx to Johann Baptist von Schweitzer. <laughs> Two. 
The critique of state socialism was a common theme in Marx's political reflections during that period. A few days after the letter to Schweitzer, he suggested to Engels that the position of the Lasallians in Germany was akin to the, quote, alliance of the, quote, proletariat with the, quote, government against the, quote, liberal bourgeoisie, end quote, end quote, which the two of them had firmly opposed in 1847. Marx's critique to the policy of German social democracy continued in 1866. In the Instructions for Delegates of the Provisional General Council, prepared for the Geneva Congress, Marx underlined the basic function of trade unions against which not only the mutualists but also certain followers of Robert Owen in Britain and of LaSalle in Germany had taken a stand. LaSalle advocated the concept of a, quote, iron law of wages, end quote, which held that efforts to increase wages were futile and a distraction for workers from the primary task of assuming political power in the state. Marx wrote, quote, this activity of the trades unions is not only legitimate, it is necessary. It cannot be dispensed with so long as the present system of production lasts. On the contrary, it must be generalized by the formation and the combination of trades unions throughout all countries. On the other hand, union consciously, excuse me, on the other hand, unconsciously to themselves, the trades unions were forming centers of organization of the working class, as the medieval municipalities and communes did for the middle class. If the trades unions are required for the guerrilla fights between capital and labor, they are still more important as organized agencies for superseding the very system of wage, labor, and capital rule, end quote. Marx, in the letter to Engels. No. That's in the, on the... Uh, Fuck. I think it's from the instru introduction. Instructions for delegates of the Provisional General Council from 1866. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the resolutions of the G Geneva Congress, 1866, sorry. And that you can find that in Workers Unite, the International After 150 Years, edited by Marcelo Musto. In the same document, Marx did not spare the existing unions, unions his criticism, for they were, quote, too exclusively bent upon the local and immediate struggles with capital, bracket, and had, end bracket, not yet fully understood their power of acting against the system of wage slavery itself. They therefore kept too much aloof from general social and political movements, end quote. In 1868, Marx returned to the question of state socialism. In a letter to Engels, he suggested that what von Schweitzer had described the previous month in Hamburg at the Congress of the General Association of German Workers as the, quote, summa of LaSalle's discoveries, end quote. That is, state credit for the foundation of productive associations was, quote, literally copied from the program of, the Fr of French Catholic Socialism, end quote, inspired by Philip Bouchez, which went back to the, quote, days of Louis-Philippe, end quote. Karl Marx, Marx to Engels, 19th of September, 1868. Instead, strong opposition to the government would have been good for the social struggle, quote, the most essential thing for the German working class is that it should cease to agitate by permission of the high government authorities. Such a bureaucratically schooled race must undergo a complete course of, quote, self-help, end quote, end quote. 
That sounds very uh, much like Anton Panacook. Right there. In my opinion. In a letter to Schweitzer, Marx set out at greater length his differences with the Lasallian tendency. The first question was his opposition to the strategy of, quote, state aid versus self-help, end quote, which Bouches, the leader of Catholic Socialism, had used against the genuine workers' movement in France, and on the basis of which Lasalle himself had later made, quote, concessions to the Prussian monarchy, to Prussian reaction, the feudal party, and even to the clericals, end quote. For Marx, it was essential that the workers' struggle should be free and independent, quote, the main thing is to teach, bracket, the worker, end bracket, to walk by himself, end quote, especially in Germany where, quote, he is re re regulated bureaucratically from childhood onwards, end quote, and believes in the authority of superiors. Um, this kind of reminds me of Kant's uh, piece, uh, you know, What is Enlightenment? Where he says, you know, enlightenment is uh, humankind uh, overcoming its self-imposed immaturity or something to that effect. Um, learning to uh, think and act for oneself and uh, not be a, uh, not be an, an, be an instrument of other people's will. It's a... Uh, the proletariat, in other words, seems to be like it's encouraged to move from the state of object to subject. Um, which I might be totally wrong, but to my understanding, that's kind of like Lukács' whole thing. Of like, the proletariat realizing its uh, objectification while being a subject. And that kind of being like the, some kind of impetus towards uh, communist action <laughs> as organized via the Leninist party or something to that effect. I'm not an Olukraj expert, so just ignore that. I'm talking out of my ass. Um, The other significant area of disagreement was the theoretical and political rigidity of LaSalle and his followers. Marx criticized the comrade with whom he had been in touch for many years on the grounds that, quote, like everyone who claims to have in his pocket a panacea for the sufferings of the masses, bracket LaSalle, end bracket, gave his agitation from the very start a religious sectarian character, end quote, and being the founder of a sect, quote, he denied all natural connection with the earlier movement, both in Germany and abroad, end quote. LaSalle was guilty of the same error as Proudhon, that of, quote, not seeking the real basis of his agitation and the actual elements of the class movement, but of wishing instead to prescribe for that movement a course determined by a certain doctrinaire recipe, end quote. For Marx, any, quote, sect seeks its raison d'etre and its point de honneur, not in what it has in common with the class movement, but in the particular shibboleth distinguishing it from that movement, end quote. Karl Marx to Johann Baptist von Schweitzer, 13th of October, 1868. Marx's opposition to that kind of politics could not have been clearer. Um, there's a footnote I missed here. It says, uh, Although Marx declined the invitation to the Hamburg Congress, Marx nevertheless found some signs of progress. To Engels, he remarked, quote, I was glad to see that the starting points of any, quote, serious, end quote, workers' movement, agitation for complete political freedom, regulation of the working day, and international cooperation of the working class are emphasized in their program for the Congress, dot, dot, dot. 
In other words, I congratulated them on having abandoned LaSalle's program, end quote. Marx to Friedrich Engels, 26th of August, 1868. End footnote. In the fight against state socialism, Marx also took issue with Liebknecht. One of his speeches in the Reichstag in, September, excuse me, in summer 1869, Marx commented to Engels, quote, The brute believes in the future, quote, state of democracy, end quote. Secretly, that means sometimes constitutional England, sometimes the bourgeois United States, sometimes wretched Switzerland. He has no conception of revolutionary politics, end quote. Marx to Engels, 10th of August, 1869. What disappointed Marx most was that in the North German Confederation, despite the existence of two political organizations of the workers' movement, the Lasallian General Association of German Workers and the Marxist Social Democratic Workers' Party of Germany, there was little enthusiasm for the international and few requests to affiliate to it. During its first three years, German militants virtually ignored its existence, fearing persecution at the hands of the authorities. The weak internationalism of the Germans ultimately weighed more heavily than any legal aspect. However, and de declined still further when the movement became more preoccupied with internal matters. The unification of Germany in 1871 confirmed the onset of a new age in which the nation-state would be the central form of political, legal, and territorial identity. This placed a question mark over any supranational body that required its members to surrender a sizable share of their political leadership. At the same time, the growing differences between national movements and organizations made it extremely difficult for the General Council of the International to produce a political synthesis capable of satisfying the demands of all. Anyway, after the end of the International in September 1872, Marx continued to criticize the path of German social democracy any time he had a chance. Section 2 against the, quote, Gotha program, end quote, and the social democratic deviation. At the end of 1874, Marx learned from the papers that the General Association of German Workers, founded by Ferdinand LaSalle, and the Social Democratic Workers' Party linked to Marx, intended to unite into a single political force. Marx and Engels were not consulted about the merits of the project, and it was only in Marx that they received the draft program of the new party. Um. Engels wrote to August Babel that he could not, quote, forgive his not having told us a single word about the whole business, end quote. And he warned that he and Marx could, quote, never give, bracket there, end bracket, allegiance to a new party, end quote, set up on the basis of Lasallian state socialism. Despite this sharp declaration, the leaders who had been active in building what would become the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany, the SAPD, did not change their positions. Marx therefore felt obliged to write a long critique of the draft program for the Unification Congress to be held on the 22nd of May 1875 in the city of Gotha. In the letter accompanying his text, he recognized that, quote, every step of real movement is more important than a dozen programs, end quote. But in the case of, quote, programs of principles, end quote, they had to be written with great care since they set, quote, benchmarks for all the world to gauge how far the party, bracket, has, end bracket, progressed, end quote. Um, uh, Marx to Wilhelm Bracke, 5th of May, 1875. In the critique of the Gotha program, 1875, Marx inveighed against the numerous imprecisions and mistakes in the new manifesto drafted in Germany. For example, in criticizing the concept of, quote, fair distribution, he asked polemically, quote, do not the bourgeois assert that present-day distribution is, quote, fair, end quote? 
And is it not, in fact, the only, quote, fair, end quote, distribution on the basis of the present-day mode of production, end quote? Critique of the Gata program. In his view, the political demand to be inserted into the program was not LaSalle's, quote, undiminished proceeds of labor, end quote, for every worker, but the transformation of the mode of production. Marx explained, with his customary rigor, that LaSalle, quote, did not know what wages were, end quote. Following bourgeois economists, he, quote, took the appearance for the essence of the matter, end quote. Marx explained, quote, wages are not what they appear to be, namely the value or price of labor, but only a massed form for the value or price of labor power. Thereby, the whole bourgeois conception of wages hitherto, as well as all the criticism hitherto directed against this conception, was thrown overboard once, for all, once and for all, and it was made clear that the wage worker has permission to work for his own subsistence, that is, to live only insofar as he works for a certain time gratis for the capitalist, and hence also for the latter's co-consumers of surplus value. That the whole capitalist system of production turns on increasing this gratis labor by extending the working day or by developing productivity, that is, increasing the intensity of labor power, etc., that consequently the system of wage labor is a system of slavery, and indeed of a slavery which becomes more severe in proportion as the social productive forces of labor develop, whether the worker receives better or worse payment, end quote. Marx from the critique of the Gotha program. I have to keep pronouncing it Gotha, now I'm getting I'm getting insecure about my pronunciation. I gotta look this up. Gota. Gota. What was I saying? I think that's what I was saying. Anyway, another controversial point concerned the role of the state. Marx maintained that capitalism could be overthrown only through the, quote, revolutionary transformation of society, end quote. The Lasallians held that, quote, socialist organization of the total labor arises from the state aid that the state gives to the producers' cooperative societies, which the state, not the worker, calls into being, end quote. Critique of the Gotha program. For Marx, however, quote, cooperative societies bracket were, end bracket, of value, only in so far as they were the independent creations of the workers and not protégés either of governments or of the bourgeoisie, end quote. The idea that, quote, with state loans one can build a new society just as well as a new railway, end quote, was typical of LaSalle's theoretical ambiguities. All in all, Marx observed that the political manifesto for the Fusion Congress showed that socialist ideas were having a hard time penetrating the German workers' organizations. In keeping with his earlier convictions, footnote, see Karl Marx's contribution to the critique of Hegel's philosophy of law, where he writes concerning, quote, the antithesis of state and civil society, end quote, that, quote, the state does not reside in but outside society, end quote. Quote, in democracy, the state as particular is merely particular. The French have recently interpreted this as meaning that in true democracy, the state is annihilated. This is correct insofar as the political state, dot, 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 no longer passes for the whole, end quote. Marx emphasized that it was wrong on their part to treat, quote, the state as an independent entity that possesses its own intellectual, ethical, and libertarian basis, end quote. Instead of, quote, treating existing society, dot, 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 as the basis of the existing state, end quote. 
By contrast, Wilhelm Liebknecht and other German socialist leaders defended their tactical decisions to compromise on the program on the grounds that this was necessary to achieve a unified party. Footnote. In the calmer waters of 1877, Engels returned to the argument in a letter to Liebknecht, quote, the moral and intellectual decline of the party dates from the unification and could have been avoided had a little more caution and intelligence been shown at the time, end quote. Friedrich Engels, Engels to Wilhelm Liebknecht, 31st of July, 1877. Years later, Liebknecht recalled that, quote, Marx would, who could not survey the condition of things from abroad as well as we in Germany, would not hear of such concessions, end quote. And Liebknecht claimed, quote, that I did not make a wrong discalculation in this respect has been brilliantly demonstrated by the consequences and the successes, end quote. Uh, Wilhelm Liebknecht. End footnote. Once again, Marx had to face up to the great difference between choices made in Berlin and in London. He had already remarked on it in relation to the scant involvement of German organizations in the International Working Men's Association. Footnote. After printing... After the printing of the program ratified at Gotha, Engels noted that, quote, not a single critical text, end quote, appeared in the, quote, bourgeois press, end quote. Had there been one, it might have noted, quote, the contradictions and economic howlers and exposed bracket the party, excuse me, and exposed bracket the, end bracket, party to the most dreadful ridicule. Instead of that, the jackasses on the bourgeois papers have taken this program perfectly seriously, reading into it what isn't there and interpreting it communistically. End quote. Engels. Engels went on to stress that, quote, the workers bracket were, end bracket, apparently doing the same, end quote, and that this had, quote, made it possible for Marx and himself not to dissociate bracket themselves, end bracket, publicly from the program, end quote. Engels to August Babel, 12th of October, 1875. Marx's critique of the Gotha program was published only in 1891, Marx dying in 1883, the year in which the Erfurt program, much closer to his own principles, was adopted. Says see Boris Nikolaevsky and Otto Manchin Helfen, Karl Marx Man and Fighter, published in 1936, who argued, quote, the split which Marx regarded as inevitable, bracket, did not, end bracket, occur. The party remained united, and in 1891, at Erfurt, adopted a pure Marxist program, end quote. End footnote. During the spring of 1875, Marx continued working on the studies he needed for some outstanding sections of Capital, the book. At the same time, he reworked parts of Johann Most's popular compilation of extracts from Volume 1 with a view to the printing of a second section. That piece was called Johann Most. I wonder how you pronounce that in German. Most? Is that Most? Most. Let's see if it's correct. Most. No. Most. Most. I probably won't remember that precise pronunciation, but it's whatever. Ooh. 
you know, that's from Johann Must. Kapital, Kapital und Arbeit, ein populärer Aussag aus Das Kapital von Karl Marx. It was published in 1873, and the second edition came out in 1876. End footnote. Between mid-May and mid-August, he composed another manuscript for Volume 3, quote, The Relationship Between Rate of Surplus Value and Rate of Profit Developed Mathematically, end quote, 1875, and in September, he was animated once again by the desire to progress as much as possible in his writing of Capital Volume 2. In the early months of 1876, having received new books and publications with statistics about Russia, Marx engaged in further systematic research into the social economic changes taking place there. His study in 1870 of the situation of the working class in Russia, 1869, a work by the economist and sociologist Vasily Vasilyevich Bervi, known by the pen name N. Flerovsky, had also given him the political motivation to delve deeper into the reality of the country, Russia. Footnote. In a letter dated the 12th of February, 1870, Marx wrote to Engels that Flerovsky's, quote, book shows incontestably that the present conditions in Russia are no longer tenable, that the emancipation of the serfs, of course, only hasten the process of disintegration, and that fearful social revolution is at the door, end quote. Karl Marx, Marx to Engels, 12th of February, 1870, end footnote. Marx's reading in the mid-1870s also included a little book entitled Revolutionary Conservatism, published in 1875 by the Slavophile thinkers Yuri Samarin, Yuri Samarin and Fyodor Dmitriev in several volumes of The Proceedings of the Tributary Commission from 1872 to 1873. During this period, there were significantly less social struggles, and Marx, whenever his health allowed, dedicated himself to, the new, to new theoretical questions. He took the opportunity to expand his range of interest to areas he had little explored before. In the spring, he turned his attention to physiology, both botanical and human. In addition, he planned to read new books on subjects of major interest, such as agronomy, land ownership, and credit, again before he had finished his studies for the completion of capital. From the middle of March, Marx returned to his research on forms of collective property. Among the texts he summarized by the end of the year were the very important History of the Village Order in Germany, 1865-66, to by the historian and statesman Georg Ludwig von Maurer. An essay on the history of land ownership in Spain, published in 1873, by the lawyer and minister Francisco de Cardenas, Espejo, and Common Abodes of the South Slavs, 18, published in 1859, by the writer and politician Ognyeslav Utyasenovic. <laughs> Marx's new research endeavors were interrupted by the summer break which his physical problems had made a necessity rather than a div diversion. Also, in the autumn of 1876, Marx suffered from several complicated health issues. Despite these tribulations and the constant work pressure from many sides, Marx made a major effort to find a publisher for the German version of Histoire, Histoire de la Commune. I don't know how you say history. I don't know how you say it. Basically, History of the 1871 Commune, 1876, by the French journalist and communard Prosper Olivier Lissagre. Marx's 
Between September and the end of 1877, Marx invested time and energy in revising the translation of what he called, quote, the first authentic history of the commune, end quote. Footnote. The English translation was done by Eleanor Marx, Marx's daughter, who at the time, against her father's wishes, was emotionally attached to the French Revolutionary. End footnote. Section 3. Political Battles at an International Level Despite adversities and poor health, Marx continued to follow all the major political and economic events attentively and critically, attempting to envisage the new scenarios to which they might give rise and how these would affect struggles for the emancipation of the working class. At the beginning of 1877, Jenny von Westphalen communicated to Sorga that her husband was, quote, deeply in the Eastern question and highly elated by the firm, honest bearing of the sons of Muhammad vis-a-vis -vis all the Christian humbugs and hypocritical atrocity mongers, end quote. Footnote. Jenny Marks to Friedrich Adolf Sorga, or Zorga, 20 or 21st of January, 1877. The main reference was to the British Liberal Prime Minister, William Gladstone, author of the highly successful pamphlet, The Bulgarian Horrors and the Question of the East, who, like, quote, all the free men and still men and merry men, end quote, had depicted the Russians as, quote, civilizers, end quote. End footnote. In April, Tsar Alexander II declared war on Turkey in pursuit of his expansionist claims, aims, using the pretext of the rebellions against Constantinople by Christians living in the European territories of the Ottoman Empire. Marx had already been active against the British liberal support for Russia. Between February and March, together with the journalist Maltman Berry, he had written three short articles, Mr. Gladstone and Russian Intrigue, Mr. Gladstone and The Great Agitator Unmasked, which were printed in Berry's name in the Whitehall Review and Vanity Fair and later in various local English, Scottish, and Irish papers. Footnote. See Maximilien Rubel, Bibliographie des Ouvriers de Karl Marx. Also of interest here are two letters to Liebnick from the 4th and 11th of February 1878, composed in the form of articles, which the Social Democrat leader eventually published in an appendix to the second edition of his pamphlet, Sur Orientalischen Frage oder Zoll Europa. Kazakish Verden. End footnote. Marx reported to Engels that many papers had, quote, shied away, end quote, and that the deputy editor of Vanity Fair feared a, quote, libel action, end quote. To Zorga, he wrote with satisfaction that, quote, English parliamentarians in the commons and the lords, dot, 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 would throw up their hands in horror if they knew that it was the Red Terror Doctor, as they call me, who had been their souffleur during the Oriental Crisis, end quote. Marx was critical of Braca. However, since in his view, quote, the workers' press concerned itself too little with the Oriental question, forgetting that the government's politics gamble wantonly with the lives and money of the people, end quote. Marx to Wilhelm Bracke, 21st of April, 1877. With ex excessive optimism, Marx wrote to Sorga, or Zorga, quote, that crisis marks a new turning point in European history, end quote. Marx thought that Russia had, quote, 
long been on the verge of an upheaval, end quote, and hoped that the Turks might, quote, advance the explosion, dot, 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 through the blows they have dealt, dot, 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 to the Russian army and Russian finances, end quote. Quote, this time, end quote, he concluded, quote, the revolution will begin in the east, hitherto the impregnable bastion and reserve army of counter-revolution, end quote. Engels reiterated this conviction to the editor of the Italian paper, La Plebe, Enrico Bignami. Quote, Once Russia has been spurred to revolution, the whole face of Europe will change. Until now, old Russia has been in the great army of European reaction. It acted as such in 1789, in 1805, in 1815, in 1830, and in 1848. Once this army is destroyed, we shall see, end quote. When it became clear in February 1878 that the Russians had been victorious, Marx regretted the fact in a letter to Liebknecht, repeating that defeat would not have it would not only have, quote, greatly expedited social revolution in Russia, end quote, but also brought about, quote, radical change throughout Europe, end quote. Nevertheless, buoyed up by his confident expectations at the time, he predicted to the English chartist and publicist Thomas Alshop that there would soon be a, quote, succession of wars, which would precipitate the social crisis and engulf all the so-called powers, those sham powers, victors, and vanquished to make room for a European social revolution, end quote. In a letter he sent to Engels in September, the horizon was similar. Quote, Nothing Russia and Prussia dot 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 can now do on the international stage can have other than pernicious consequences for their regime, nor can it delay the latter's downfall, but only expedite its violent end, end quote. From time to time, Marx had to concern himself again with the International Workingmen's Association in order to defend its name and to recall the esteem that its political line still enjoyed. In July 1878, in answer to George Howell, an old member of the organization who had become a reformist trade unionist, Marx pointed out in an article for the Secular Chronicle that what had gained the international, quote, a worldwide reputation and a place in the history of mankind, end quote, was not, quote, the size of its finances, end quote, as Howe had slanderously argued, but the, quote, strength of its intellect and its abundant energy, end quote. Marx also continued to trust in developments on the other side of the Atlantic. In July 1877, he noted in a letter to Engels, quote, the first outbreak against the associated capital oligarchy that had risen since the Civil War, end quote. It would, quote, of course be suppressed, end quote, but it might, quote, well provide a point of departure for a serious workers' party in the United States, end quote. Marx to Engels, 25th of July, 1877. Britain, on the other hand, was a country about which the two friends no longer had any illusions. In February 1878, Marx wrote to Liebnick that, quote, the English working class has gradually become ever more demoralized as a result of the period of corruption after 1848 and finally reached the stage of being no more than an appendage of the great liberal party, i.e., it of its oppressors, the capitalist, end quote. In a letter to Edward Bernstein, Engels was even more realistic, quote, a genuine workers' movement in the continental sense is non-existent here, end quote. There might still be strikes, quote, victorious or otherwise, end quote, but, quote, the working class makes no progress whatsoever, end quote, as a result of them. Engels to Edward Bernstein, 17th of June, 1879. Section 4. The Critique of Armchair Socialism.
some water real quick. <sighs> Marx never lost sight of the main political developments in Germany. After the major tensions surrounding the Gotha Congress had passed, he continued his attempts to orient the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany in an anti-capitalist direction. However, other tendencies were developing that would create fresh occasions for conflict. From 1874, Eugen Döring, an economics professor at Berlin University, began to receive significant attention from party intellectuals. Articles in support of his positions appeared in Der Volkstadt, the People's State, which had been the organ of the Social Democratic Workers' Party of Germany. Therefore, having been asked by Leibniz to get involved in having listened to Marx's view that it was necessary, quote, to criticize during without any compunction, end quote, Engels decided to write a full-scale critique of the German positivist. This task, which extended from the late 1876 until July 1878, ended in the book anti during 1877 to 78, whose publication was preceded by excerpts in the columns of Vorwärts, bracket forward, and bracket, the daily paper of the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany, born out of the Gotha Fusion Congress. Footnote On the importance of this text, see Karl Kautsky, Ein Leitung, in Friedrich Engels' Brief Weschel. Mit Karl Kautsky, edited by Benedict Kautsky, 18, I mean, 1955, 4, where the German party theorist recalls that no book did more to advance his understanding of socialism. H.J. Steinberg showed that, quote, both Bernstein, who studied anti during in 1879, and Kautsky, who did the same in 1880, became, quote, Marxist, end quote, through reading that book, end quote. In Socialismus und Deutsche Sozialdemokratie. End footnote. It seems like that was a, a the anti during was a big part of creating a, what. A, Michael Heinrich and uh, Moish Pistone called traditional Marxism or uh, worldview Marxism. Um, uh, but um, yeah, so it seems like they uh, like the importance of anti during for creating like Marxism as something more akin to like what. Heinrich calls a world re worldly religion. Um, anti during can't be overestimated in that contribution in contributing to that, and just says here that you know the two pillars of um, late nineteenth century uh, Marxism, Karl Kautsky and uh, Edward Bernstein, uh, cut their teeth on Marxism via anti during. Anyway, anyway, Marx played an active role, part in the anti during project. In the winter of 1877, he wrote the key chapter on, quote, critical history, end quote both on Engels' behalf and in his own name, conceiving it as a response to attacks contained in during Critical History of Political Economy and Socialism, published in 1871. Marx shows that, quote, by value, Herr During understands five totally different and directly contradictory things, and therefore, to put it at its best, himself does not know what he wants, end quote. Moreover, in the German economist's book, the, quote, Natural Laws of All Economics, ushered in with such pomp proved to be merely universally familiar and often not even properly understood platitudes of the worst description, end quote. That's from Anti-During. 
The, quote, sole explanation, end quote, he gives of, quote, economic facts, end quote, is that, quote, they are the result of, quote, force, end quote, a term with which the Philistine of all nations has for thousands of years consoled himself for everything unpleasant that happens to him and which leaves us just where we were, end quote. Anti during. For Marx, during does not try to, quote, investigate the origin and effects of this force, end quote. And when compelled to elucidate the capitalist exploitation of labor, he, quote, first represents it in a general way as based on taxes and price surcharges, end quote, a la Proudhon, then, quote, explains it in detail by means of Marx's theory of surplus labor, end quote. The result is totally implausible, quote, two totally contradictory modes of outlook, dot, 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 copied down without taking his breath, end quote. In the elections of January 1877, the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany won nearly half a million votes, raising its share from share above 9%. But despite this success, the state of the party continued to trouble Marx. Writing in the German Dr. Ferdinand Fleckels, excuse me, writing to the German doctor, Ferdinand Fleckels. He ridiculed the, quote, short pamphlet, end quote, entitled The Quintessence of Socialism, 1879, of sociologist Albert Scheffler, as, quote, fantastic, truly Schwabian, dot, 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 picture, of the future socialist millennium as dot 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 the kingdom come of your cozy petty bourgeoisie, end quote. Footnote. Karl Marx, Marx to Ferdinand Fleckels, 21st of January, 1877. A few years later, in a letter to Karl Kautsky, Engels wrote of the numerous inaccuracies and misunderstandings that the German economist Albert Scheffler and other, quote, armchair socialists Quote, Kadeder Zotschilisten, end quote, bracket. Excuse me, armchair socialist. Let's try this again. Kadeder Zotschilisten, end quote, displayed in relation to Marx's work. Quote, to refute, for example, all the monstrous twaddle which... Scheffler alone has assembled in his many fat terms is, in my opinion, a sheer waste of time. It would fill a fair-sized book where one merely, were one merely to attempt to put right all the misquotations from capital inserted by these gentlemen between inverted commas, end quote. Marx concluded in peremptory fashion, quote, they should Oh, no, that's not Marx's work. That's not Marx. Um, this is Engels. <laughs> Sorry. Engels concluded in peremptory fashion, quote, they should first learn to read and copy before demanding to have their questions answered, end quote. Frederick Engels, Engels to Karl Kautsky, 1st of February, 1881. End footnote. In this context, when asked by the journalist Franz Vida to take a prominent role in founding a new review, Marx commented to Engels, quote, It would certainly be very nice if a really scientific socialist periodical were to appear. This would provide an opportunity for criticism and counter-criticism in which theoretical points could be discussed by us and the total ignorance of professors and university lecturers exposed, thereby simultaneously disabusing the minds of the general public, end quote. Marx to Engels, 18th of July, 1877. In the end, however, he, put, he had to accept the shortcomings of its contributors would have precluded, quote, the prime requirement in all criticism, end quote. That it is, that is, quote, ruthlessness, end quote. 
Footnote. Engels was certainly in agreement with Marx about this as he put it in a letter to zoologist Oscar Schmidt, quote, ruthless criticism dot 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 alone does justice to free science, and dot 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 any man of science must welcome it, even when applied to himself, end quote, Frederick Engels. End footnote. Marx also directed sharp comments against Zukunft, bracket, future, end bracket, deriding its, quote, endeavor to substitute ideological catchphrases such as, quote, justice, end quote, etc. for materialist knowledge, bracket, and dot, 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 end bracket, to peddle phantasms of the future structure of society, end quote. Marx to Wilhelm Blocke, 23rd of October, 1877. And oh, excuse me. In October, Marx complained to Zorga of a, quote, corrupt spirit, end quote, spreading in the party, quote, not so much among the masses as among the leaders, end quote. The agreement with the Lasallians had, quote, led to further compromise with other waverers, end quote. In particular, Marx had no time for, quote, a whole swarm of immature undergraduates and overwise graduates who wanted to give socialism a, quote, higher idealistic, end quote, orientation, end quote. They thought they could substitute for its, quote, materialist basis, end quote, which, quote, calls for serious objective study if one is to operate thereon, end quote, a, quote, modern mythology with its goddesses of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity, end quote. Footnote. Marx to Friedrich Adolf Zorga, 19th of October, 1877. Steinberg had convincingly demonstrated the theoretical eclecticism among party, German party activists at the time. Quote, if we take the mass of members and leaders, end quote, Steinberg wrote, quote, their socialist conceptions may be described as a, quote, average socialism, end quote, composed of various elements. The view of Marx and Engels that the party's, quote, shortcomings, end quote, and theoretical ignorance and insecurity were the negative consequences of the 1875 compromise was only an expression of the Londoners' warnings about members coming out of the General Association of German Workers, end quote. Steinberg, Sozialismus und Deutsche Sozialdemokratie. End footnote. What lay behind these criticisms was never feelings of jealousy or rivalry. Marx wrote to the journalist and parliamentarian Wilhelm Bloß, or Wilhelm Bloß that he did not, quote, care a straw for popularity, end quote, reminding him that, quote, such was bracket his, end bracket, aversion to the personality cult that at the time of the international, when played by numerous moves, to accord bracket him, and bracket, public honor, bracket, he, and bracket, never allowed one of them to enter the domain of publicity, end quote, nor, quote, ever replied to them, save with an occasional snub, end quote. This attitude had sustained him ever since the political commitments of his youth, so that when the Communist League was born in 1847, Marx and Engels had joined, quote, only on condition that anything conducive to a superstitious belief in authority be eliminated from the rules, end quote. March to Wilhelm Bloss, 10th of November, 1877. His only concern had been, and continued to be, that the nascent workers' organizations should not blur their anti-capitalism and, in the manner of the British labor movement, adopt a moderate pro-bourgeois line. Footnote. Two years later, Engels wrote in a similar vein to Babel, quote, You know that Marx and I have voluntarily conducted the defense of the party against its opponents abroad throughout the party's existence, and that we have never asked anything of the party in return save that it should not be untrue to itself, end quote. 
Using diplomatic language, he tried to get comrades in Germany to understand that although his and Marx's, quote, criticism might be displeasing to some, end quote, it might be advantageous to the party to have, quote, the presence of Borod, of a couple of men who, uninfluenced by confusing local conditions and the minutia of the struggle, compare from time to time what has been said and what has been done with the theoretical tenets valid for any modern proletarian movement, end quote. Engels to August Babel, 14th of November, 1879. End footnote. A major event in the 1870s was the attempted assassination of Kaiser Wilhelm I by the anarchist Ka Karl Nobeling in June 1878. Marx's reactions were later recorded by Kovalevsky. Quote, I happened to be in Marx's library when he got news of bracket the and bracket unsuccessful attempt dot 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 bracket his and bracket reaction was to curse the terrorist explaining that only one thing could be expected from his attempt to accelerate the course of events namely new persecutions of the socialists end quote. That was precisely what ensued as Bismarck used the pretext to introduce the anti-socialist laws and get them adopted by the Reichstag in October. Marx commented to Engels, quote, Outlawing has from time immemorial been an infallible means of making anti-government movements, quote, illegal, end quote, and protecting the government from the law, quote, legality kills us, end quote, end quote. The debate in Parliament took place in mid-September, and Bracca sent Marx the stenographic record of the Reichstag sessions and a copy of the draft legislation. Marx planned to write a critical article for the British press and began to compile extracts and notes from, for that purpose. In a few pages, he outlined the difference between the Mass Socialist Workers' Party of Germany and the anarchists. The former constituted, quote, the genuine historical movement of the working class, the other, dot, 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 a phantom of dead-end youth intent on making history, bracket, which, end bracket, merely shows how the ideas of French socialism are caricatured in the declassed men of the upper classes, end quote. Karl Marx, the parliamentary debate on the anti-socialist laws. In rebutting the argument of the Prussian interior minister, August Eulenberg, that the workers' aims were violent, he made his position quite clear. Quote, the objective is the emancipation of the working class and the revolution, transformation of society implicit therein. A historical development can remain, quote, peaceful, end quote, only for so long as its progress is not forcibly obstructed by those wielding social power at the time. If in England, for existence, or the United States, the working class were to gain a majority in Parliament or Congress, they could, by lawful means, rid themselves of such laws and institutions as impeded their development, dot, dot, dot. However, the, quote, peaceful, end quote, movement might be transformed into a, quote, forcible, end quote, one by resistance on the part of those interested in restoring the former state of affairs. If, as in the American Civil War and French Revolution, they are put down by force, it is as rebels against, quote, lawful, end quote, force. For Marx, then, the government was, quote, seeking to suppress by force a development it disliked but could not lawfully attack, end quote. That necessarily was, quote, the prelude to violent revolution, end quote. Quote, an old story which yet remains eternally true, end quote, he added, quoting Heinrich Heine, who lived from 1797 to 1856. In a letter to Zorga from September 1879, Marx described the new tendencies emerging in the German party. He stressed that people like the publisher Karl Hüch 
Berg, quote, non-entities in theory and nincompoops in practice, end quote, were, quote, seeking to draw the teeth of socialism, which they have rehashed in accordance with academic formulae, and of the party in particular, end quote. Their aim was, quote, to enlighten the workers, dot, 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 to provide them out of their confused and superficial knowledge with educative elements, end quote, and above all, quote, to make the party, quote, respectable, end quote, in the eyes of the Philistines, end quote. They were, he concluded, quote, poor counter-revolutionary windbags, end quote. With subtle humor, he suggested that Bismarck had, quote, done a lot of good not to himself but us, end quote, by imposing selective silence in Germany and allowing such windbags, quote, a chance of making themselves plainly heard, end quote. In a French police report from London, an agent claimed that, quote, following the death of LaSalle, Marx Bracket had become, end, on, end bracket, the undisputed leader of the German revolutionaries. If the socialist deputies in Germany, Bracket, were, end bracket, the official leaders, the divisional commanders, Marx Bracket was, end bracket, the chief of the general staff. He devised the battle plans and bra watched over other, excuse me, watched over their implementation, end quote. In reality, Marx's criticisms of the party often went unheeded, and from his study in London, he observed, quote, the depths, end quote, to which, quote, parliamentary representatives, end quote, had, quote, already been brought by parliamentarism, end quote. Is that supposed to be bought? It says brought. Oh, no, I think it just brought... Never mind. Marx to Zorga, 19th of September, 1879. Another polemical focus was the question of who should edit the new journal of the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany, their Sozial Democrat, the Social Democrat, publication of which began in Zurich, in September, 19, September 1879, Marx and Engels, disagreeing with the proposed stance of the paper, felt obliged to send another letter drafted by Engels to Babel, Liebknecht, and Bracca. In this, quote, circular letter, end quote, of 1879, as it became known, they denounced the growing consensus in the party behind the position of Hochberg, the main source of finance up for the undertaking. He had recently published an article in the Jahrbuch für Sozialwissenschaft und Sozialpolitik, announced for social science and social policy, a reformist journal under his direction in which he called for a return to the Lasallian spirit. In his view, the Lasallians had given birth to a political movement open, quote, not only to the workers, but all honest Democrats in the van of which, bracket, should, end bracket, march the independent representatives of science and all men imbued with a true love of mankind, end quote. For Marx, all these were views he had firmly rejected since his early years in the Manifesto of the Communist Party, 1848. The circular letter underlined the dangers of one of Hochberg's statements. Quote, in short, the working class is incapable of emancipating itself by its own efforts. In order to do so, it must place itself under the direction of, quote, educated and property, end quote, bourgeois who alone have, quote, the time and opportunity, end quote, to become conversant with what is good for the workers, end quote. In the view of this, quote, representative of the petty bourgeoisie, end quote, then, the bourgeoisie was, quote, not to be combated, not on your life, but won over by vigorous propaganda, end quote. Even the decision to defend the Paris Commune had allegedly, quote, put off people otherwise well disposed towards, end quote, the workers' movement. In conclusion, Engels and Marx noted with alarm that Hochberg's objective was to make, quote, the overthrow of the capitalist order 
dot, 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 unattainably remote, end quote, and, quote, utterly irrelevant to present political practice, end quote. One could therefore, quote, consolate, compromise, philanthropize to one's heart's content. The same thing applied to the class struggle between proletariat and bourgeoisie, end quote. The disagreement was total. Marx's tenacious opposition to what he called the, quote, armchair socialist riffraff, end quote, was akin to his view of those who confined themselves to empty rhetoric, however concealed beneath radical language. Following the launch of the journal Freiheit, Freedom, he explained to Zorga that he had reproached its editors not for being, quote, too revolutionary, end quote, but for having, quote, no revolutionary content, end quote, end quote, not, excuse me, end quote, merely indulging in revolutionary jargon, end quote. In his book, both these positions, though stemming from very different political tendencies, were no danger to the existing system and ultimately made its survival possible. Marx's idea of socialism was very different from state socialism and reformism that sorry Marx's idea of socialism was very different from state socialism and reformism that emerged in the German Social Democratic Party and that became hegemonic after the foundation of the Second International the Marx revival underway today will be much more effective if Marx's writings are re-examined for an understanding not only of how capitalism works, but of the failure of socialist experiences until today. It goes without saying that we cannot today simply rely on what Marx wrote a century and a half ago, nor should we lightly discount the content and clarity of his analysis or fail to take up the critical weapons he offered for fresh thinking about an alternative society to capitalism.